Northern Lake Huron is one of the most beautiful places in the Great Lakes region. The quiet little fishing port of Presque Isle, Michigan isn't a place that you'll find featured in the pages of outdoor life, but it should be. Based on a red-hot fishing tip from Captain Ed Rutherford, Mark and Jake Romanak pack up the StarCraft and head straight to Northern Lake Huron. What they find blows them away and may well become an annual Fishing 411 adventure. On this episode of Fishing 411, the landing net is wet start to finish. We are hooked up, and uh, you know, with downriggers, there's always that question: How do you tell when you have a bite? Well, when your rod goes down, touches the water, and then pops right back up to the sky, then goes right back down to the water. Pretty good idea. You got a bite, man. You got yourself a bite, and that's what we got going on here. Well, we came up to Presque Isle, Michigan, for the afternoon. It's the first time I've ever been here. In five minutes on the water, fish on. <laughs> You gotta love that. You gotta love that. Oh goodness. You got us a fat lake trout's what we got going on right here, Jeekers. Are we good to go there, kid? Yeah. All right. Well, he wants to go to the wrong side of the boat, but I'll see if I can steer him over here for you. Not a bad start. That's no, good no, fish. No, no, it's not a bad start at all. Oh, baby. He didn't like that. <laughs> we got us a rotator and a spinning glow, and we got us some lake trout action. Nice. Yeah, baby. Job, nice, man. nice job, Jacob. Good fish. Nice job. <laughs> Look how fat he is. <laughs> I like it when the fish are fatter than I am. That's a good thing. Oh, baby. <laughs> nice looking trout. You know, and Lake Huron is just literally full of fish like this and bigger. Lots and lots of trouts if you're looking to get yourself your string stretched. Hey, baby. Pull tight. Oh, yeah, he's there. <laughs> Look at that rod tip, Dad. Woo. So, you know, we're going to talk exactly about how we're catching these lake trout because this is really a fun way to target fish. If you're just looking to get your string stretched, catch a lot of fish, Lake Huron is a great place to do it because it is a fishery that is chucked full of lake trout. Now, we might catch some other species of fish and we're putting some lines up higher in the water column to target those species of fish. But we really came out here with the lake trout in mind. And this is a good one, Dad. He is pulling hard. Five minutes in the water and uh, we're hooked up, we're hooked up, we're hooked up. We got stuff laying all over everything. We haven't even put away our stuff yet from where we sit up, so. 
Well, that's a good thing. That's a sign that it's going to have a good day. Today. Yeah, we're going to have a good day. All right, I want to throw the rod tip over here and see if I can't guide him over here. I think you're doing good. You keep him coming right right. Uh oh, sorry about that sign. Tangled in my own rod down here. Sorry about that. All right, let's try that again. There you go. You got it coming. Okay. Nice fish, Dad. Good job. We'll pull that fish up there and show him off. It's a pretty fish, Dad. This one doesn't have as big of a gut on him, but you can tell he's still been eating, just super healthy. The one thing that the Lake Huron system has right now is a lot of smelt. And you'll see these fish are out here doing one thing, and that's gorging on these smelt. And, uh, and they're not shy. We're gonna show you exactly what it takes to catch lake trout like this and catch a bunch of them here on this week's episode of Fishing 4-in-1. But that is a gorgeous fish, and uh, whew, a good fight, Dad. What you might want to look for when these trout is to see if they have any fin clips on them, and I don't see one yet. Oh, there we go. We've got a clip on this side, and that's an indication that's a hatchery trout, not a wild trout. We have a good mix of wild trout here and also a hatchery trout, and so when you look at them, you can tell whether you're looking at a wild fish. Wild fish has no clips. Clipped fins are obviously hatchery fish. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Dioa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. This week's episode is filmed at a place called Presqu'ile, Michigan. And if you don't know where Presqu'ile is, it wouldn't surprise me. It's a very small, sleepy little fishing community. It's located between Rogers City and Alpena and Northern Lake Huron. Well, you know, we had the crash in 2004 with the salmon. Um, it went down and then it started back up again and now we've got a good variety. That's what we talk about. We can catch uh, some days you catch up to seven different varieties of fish out there, but you know, I fish for the salmonoid and the trout, but we do catch walleyes also and, and some other species, but, but that's basically really is really come on you know there's a different variety but uh, just a good fishery all around you know the way that we're targeting these fish today is with the technique that's definitely no secret probably the most iconic way to catch a lake trout in the great lakes is with a presentation called the dodger and spinning glow and i have one sitting right here this is a dodger and this is a spinning glow it's a yakima bait product and let me tell you, the number of lake trout that have fallen victim over the years to a spinning glow is a crazy number. But the only thing we're doing differently today is we want to cover ground. See, there's other fish in this water column right now that maybe are higher up, maybe it's things like steelhead or cohos, that you have to go a little bit faster using other presentations. One of the problems with the Dodger is it's a slow presentation, meaning that 1.8 to 1.9 seems to be the speed that you choose when you're fishing a Dodger. Well, today we're also fishing spoons in the water column so we want to go faster and what we're doing is we're still fishing that spinning glow same length leader but we've changed it out to a rotator um, something like this pro troll right here there's a lot of different types of rotators out there the one thing you want to keep in mind when it comes to lake trout is that if it's white green or chartreuse you really can't go wrong but the nice thing about this style of rotator is we can go faster now we can cover the water at two two and a half maybe even pushing that 2.7 miles an hour so we can cover more water get in front of more more fish and hopefully by the end of the day have a lot more stories to tell. I was looking back and uh and of course, I saw, you know, as I'm looking back, I see this fish jumping. It's the weirdest sensation. What is that fish jumping back there 100 feet or, you know, or 200 feet back? What's that fish doing that dawns on you? He's on your lead core. <laughs> so we have a silver fish of sorts on here. I'm guessing it's probably a steelhead. We'll find out when he gets a little closer. Well, that's one of the beauties of being able to go faster. When we talk about spoons, we use spoons a lot in Fishing 4 on one and we're typically trolling two miles an hour or faster. Um, my favorite spoon feet speed is right around that two, three, two, four miles per hour. And that works real good for fish like steelhead. And if you can mix in your pattern, things like spoons and also the spinning glow, you can double down and catch a lot of fish. So we can catch those lakers deep on the spinning glow, we can catch the steelhead high on spoons. And that's the goal here. Thumping, just thumping. I had to tighten my drag a little bit in order to be able to get the fish in the board in close enough to get the board off. But once I get that board off, I want that drag nice and loose so if that steelhead makes a run, he's just going to pull out drag and I don't have to worry about having him tear free. What do we got? Come on over here. Work with me, Bubba. Work with me. There we go. Get him on the right side of the boat here. Look at those colors. Look at those colors. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish, Dad. I can just get a little bit more on him here. 
There you go. Excellent. We got him in the net. Excellent. Man, that is a beautiful steelhead. Okay, he came out nice and clean. Look at the colors on that fish. Holy smokes. Absolutely drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> I love them all, but man, do I love steelhead. They don't get much better than that. That one is definitely what we're looking for. You've seen us do this before. Yes, we wash our lures. We're trying to get any blood and slime and anything that might spook fish off from the lure as far as for odors. Then we're gonna reapply um, Procure Super Gel and that's gonna be our fish attractant. So first thing we gotta do is get the blood off and then we can put the Super Gel on. You know, one of the fun things about these lake trout is how they just keep you busy. I mean, literally, we came out here in the afternoon, middle of the day, set lines in the water, and boom, you got fish on. So they just keep you busy, and man, they fight hard. The one thing you want to keep in mind when it comes to lake trout fishing is it's a species of fish that likes to live near the bottom. That doesn't necessarily mean that every lake trout in Lake Huron is laying on the bottom, but they sure like to spend a lot of time on the bottom. So your downriggers are the perfect tool to get down there efficiently. You can drop that rigger just a couple feet up off the bottom there. Uh, keep that spinning glow floating above the bottom so you don't have to worry about getting any snags. And you'll catch a lot of lake trout out here in Lake Huron pulling a spinning glow just off the bottom. Let's pull this fish up, show them off. This one is going to be the perfect size for the grill. So this one is coming home with me. But man, I tell you what, here's a rotator, a spinning glow. And you know, I like to run them about 24 to 18 inches for the leader. So basically the spinning glow to the rotator is about 24 to 18 inches. It's a system that you just can't go wrong. I mean, we've literally taken this to all five of the Great Lakes and have caught fish doing it. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. If you're a jig fisherman, there's a pretty good chance that you're using stinger hooks to help you catch more fish. Doesn't matter what species you're after, you could be targeting walleye or maybe lake trout, stinger hooks put more fish in the boat. What we're going to do today is we're going to show you some custom tricks for putting your own stinger hooks together that are going to help you put more fish in the boat. To get started, you're going to need some basic components. Of course, you're going to need hooks. Um, we recommend Eagle Claw hooks that you're going to need for walleyes. You're going to need sizes of 10, um, 8s, and maybe even some 6s. If you go to a larger species, like lake trout, you're going to probably want to have some sixes, some eights, and maybe even some number fours. You're also going to need line sleeves, and the size I'm going to recommend is 47 thousandths. The reason for that is that 47 thousandths is going to be ideally suited to 20 pound test fluorocarbon, and that's what we're going to use as our main line. And then you're also going to need a pair of needle nose pliers to help crimp down the crimps, and you're also going to need a pair of scissors to cut the fluorocarbon. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out here by just cutting myself a length of fluorocarbon, about 10 inches long is about perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and tie on the very end of it an overhand knot, a granny knot, if you will. And I'm gonna go through twice here. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I wanna create a knot that's fairly large in diameter. And I'm just gonna pull it up tight. That knot is gonna be a stopper. Okay, once I have that on place, I can reach down here and grab one of these sleeves. Now they're tiny, so they're hard to get a hold of, but I'm gonna run the line through the sleeve all the way down to the knot. It'll stop at the knot, and then I'm gonna run it back through the sleeve a second time. Looking good, pull that up. Now what I've done is I've created a little loop. Now if I grab my jig here, you can, I can help illustrate a little bit. I can place that loop over the jig and I can pull it up. That's what's gonna cinch the stinger hook actually onto the jig, all right? So that part is done now. I'll loosen that up just a little bit. Now the second step here, or the next step, is it's gonna be time to put the hook on. So I need another sleeve. So I'm gonna grab a sleeve, I'm gonna slide it on the line. Here she goes. And then I'm gonna pick one of my treble hooks here, and I'm gonna slide the line through the treble hook, and then I'm gonna slide the line back through the sleeve again. Now what I have is the sleeves on both ends and connected to the treble hook, but the length of the stinger is not right here. So what I wanna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and put my jig on here just to help me a little bit. And then I'm gonna start controlling the length of the stinger by pulling up the line here. And the beauty of this method 
is that I can get this stinger to be exactly the length that I want it. In this case, I'm gonna go for about three inches, and pull the sleeve up nice and tight, and then I'm gonna grab my pliers, and I'm just gonna crimp on that sleeve, squeeze it down so it can't move. And the only sleeve that you crimp is the one that's actually on the stinger hook itself. The only thing I have to do now to clean it up a little bit is get my scissors and trim that tag ends out. There's one, there's another, and what I have is a stinger on the jig that's about three inches long. And if I want, I can open up and create a little loop like so, so I can take the stinger off or I can put it back on. The beauty of that is every time I have to bait the hook, I can take the stinger off, I can put the bait on, then I can put the stinger on top of it. The beauty of that is you can use it with light bait, you can also use it with soft plastics. One of the other things you need to understand about stinger hooks is how you're gonna use them as far as, are you gonna stick them into your plastic or stick them into your minnow you might be fishing with, or are you gonna let them free dangle? Now there's two theories of thought here. Historically, most people would suggest that if you take the stinger hook and put it in the plastic or put it in the minnow, that that's gonna be your better option. But experience has taught us that by leaving the stinger hook just dangling tends to work a little bit better. And the reason for that is that when the fish eats the presentation, the lightest part of the presentation is gonna go right into their mouth. Well, if the stinger hook is not hooked to the plastic or if it's not hooked to the minnow, zoom, it goes right in the fish's mouth and you'll catch that fish. So let that stinger hook dangle and you'll catch more walleyes and lake trout. We are hooked up. <laughs> oh, the seven color fire's quick. And I mean quick. <laughs> I guess we better let him run a little bit and tire out. I'm gonna get that old clicker off there. Man. We got a bowstring going on here, Dick. Can't get any ground on this boy. <laughs> I wanna get that board and get it off, Whoa. but oh, he is, he is pulling hard and I don't wanna put too much pressure on him. You said that's a seven color, so that one's 3540 down. We're going pretty fast, so these are riding, leg cords are riding up a little bit higher in the water because of it. Uh, it seems like on our graph, we're marking on our graph, fish in that top 40 feet of the water column. And those are going to be your silverfish. Those are going to be your steelhead and your cohos and your king salmon. Um, and like I said, we're late here in the summer. Um, this is late September, so the big kings for the most part have come up the river um, and done their spawning at this point. But there's still a lot of great fish out here to be caught. And the water temperature right now is 58 degrees on the surface. So these fish can literally be right on the surface or anywhere else in the water column. Uh, so the best way to target these fish is with lead core and then just kind of spread your lines out throughout the water column. You have to show that off. He just lassoed himself. Oh, I'm afraid so. And we see this quite often. This is really a common thing with trout and salmon is that they love to roll when they're, when they're hooked. Oh my goodness, now look at that. Now if that doesn't get your heart pumping, man, Lake Huron Steelhead. Lake Huron is alive and well. Man, that is a gorgeous fish. Absolutely what we're hoping to catch here. Nice bonus fish. All these lake trout out here with some nice silver fish mixed in. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fish hawk is called boating. Look at this, look at my diver right there now too. I literally have my three legal rods out for fishing. I got you one got on the one diver, three. you're catching <laughs> one on this one, and I got a steelhead on my high line. We got a little break in the action. We could talk about spinning glow colors, and this is where it gets confusing because they come in hundreds, literally hundreds of color combinations. Not only the body color, but also the wings themselves come in different colors. You can get them in white, you can get them in black, you can get them in flash tape of different colors, and so it gets real confusing. So let me just pick out what I consider to be three or four really solid colors for lake trout that just can't go wrong no matter where you take them. In, uh, in that instance, I would say that uh, uh, we talked a bit earlier about things that's got chartreuse and green on them. Pretty hard to beat, you know, a spinning glow that's got chartreuse and green on it. This, this one right here, which is called Fire Tiger, is also very popular with the lake trout guys. The one that's been really working for us real good today is, uh, is this guy right here. And I don't know what color that's called, but I'm telling you, it's lights out for lake trout. And then, of course, um, anything with the dots on them, 
and this one here has been very good in the past. So if you're looking to target lake trout on spinning glows, those handful of colors are going to get it done. Pretty much every body of water you're going to find lake trout living in. i got to turn the clicker off. Man, this diver just started screaming. You see, you got him on the surface already. You'll see what he is. I had this bait up high in the water column, and I changed it out um, from a spinning glow, and I just put a spoon on, put it higher in the water column, see if maybe I can target a silverfish. And this wasn't down maybe about 15 minutes, and we got one biting, and the crazy thing was we literally marked fish on the graph. It shows how important precision trolling is, because I knew exactly where to put that diver in the water column to get that bait to the depth of where these fish are. Nice steelhead, Dad. Good looking cromer. A little closer. Nice fish. That is a beautiful Ooh, fish. Off, off in the, in the net, net, too. <laughs> off in the net. You know, Dad, I've had a lot of fun out here on Lake Huron. You know, yesterday afternoon we got out here and again this morning and so often I hear people use the, the term the Dead Sea of Lake Huron and that is just simply not the case. You can go out here, you can catch a lot of fish, you can get beautiful steelhead like this one right here and lake trout, maybe a king salmon or two. There's a lot of opportunities on Lake Huron, so you want to get out here and check it out. My name is Jake Romanek and you've been watching Fishing 411. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Look at this. We're literally trying to film a TV show, and he's on the phone. But that's okay. Because we got one of the eye lines to fire, so I will gladly take his fish on his side of the boat. <laughs>